So far this year, I've taken 41 flights. And while this amount of travel has definitely shown me my limits, it's also allowed me to perfect my travel everyday carry. So tomorrow I'm flying out on a very short trip to Shanghai, China and thought this would be the perfect time to highlight and run you through everything I take with me to make my travels as smooth, seamless and productive as possible. Alrighty, so my travel essentials tech EDC, however you want to call it, this is exactly what I'm taking on my uh, little endeavor to China, if you will. So anyway, let's start off with the bag itself. By the way, everything's going to be linked down below. Not sponsored whatsoever. Nothing in this video is sponsored whatsoever. But this bag is from Brevity. I believe it's called the Jumper. The cool thing about this bag is up the top, it's completely normal, which is amazing. And then down below is all the camera gear and the camera compartment, which is just so nice, especially as someone that is a uh, bit of a photographer, if you'll say. I love being able to take gear that looks in a bag that doesn't look like a camera bag. And then I can also have normal stuff up the top. So this bag arguably is perfect for me. So let's first of all, check out what is inside this bag. And then we're gonna pack the rest of this bag in this video. So we're gonna open up the little camera compartment down here. And the first thing we're gonna pull out is this guy right here. This is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. I take all of my audio with this here. So anytime I'm going somewhere, this is the mic of choice. I know it looks big. I know it looks weird with this fluffy dead cat on it. But the thing is about this microphone, it is so nice. I love this. I still am yet to find a microphone that sounds this good, that fits this easily into bags and onto cameras and this, that, and the other. So anyway, this is the microphone I roll with, and this is the little cable that makes all the magic happen. We then have, <clears throat> real quick, this uh, V-mount battery. I don't have a cinema rig in here. I'm not taking my R5C with me, bit of a spoiler, uh, but this powers my iPad like crazy, powers my camera like crazy, can charge my phone, you name it. Whatever I need to do with this battery, it pumps out power. This is the FX Lion Nano 2 battery and the wattage output from, or the ampage output, however it works, from the top of these ports, you have USB-A, you have USB-C, and you have micro USB, is super high, which means you can power, let's say, a MacBook, for example. I could plug my MacBook into this and I could be editing video and it would still charge over, you know, losing battery, which is ideal. If you just plug your MacBook into any kind of power bank, not always ideal. So anyway, I take, tarry, I take this and carry this everywhere. And then I also have my camera, my travel camera of choice, which is the Canon R6. I love this guy. I thought I would sell it in the beginning of the year when I got my Canon R5C, but uh, here we are. That's always a lie. If you are a photographer or a videographer and you have gear and you buy to upgrade this, that, and the other, it's always so difficult to part ways with gear, at least I find. So I've got the Canon R5, uh, yeah, the Canon R6 here um, that I love. I absolutely love this camera. It takes great photos, takes great video. It's somewhat small and lightweight, which is perfect, especially because I'm gonna be vlogging on this trip. Uh, and then I also partner that up with the 16 millimeter lens. So this lens comes everywhere when I'm making YouTube videos. It's absolutely perfect. And you'll see why I don't take any other lenses with me anymore. This is the only lens I need. And this partners up, of course, very nicely with the microphone on top and you're ready to roll. And that's actually all I have inside of this bag at the moment. So as you can see, it's come, oh, sorry. Spare Canon battery, of course. Canon battery life's fairly good, apart from the R5C, but on the R6, it's great, but I've got, of course, always take one of those with me. So that's all I've got in this bag at the moment. So what we're gonna do is we are going to pop everything back inside. We've got the R6 there, we've got the battery that goes in. We've got the spare battery that also goes in, microphone, and then we've got the little cable. And now we're gonna zip up the bottom part because that's the whole production studio. And now we can get to the interesting stuff. Okay, so I have, oh, hold on. I've got this in front of me and uh, we're gonna cover it all. So first things first, we'll start off with these guys right here. These are two, two terabyte SanDisk SSDs. I love these SSDs. I pretty much have all my current projects that I'm working on, on these uh, and a backup. So yeah, that's why I travel with two of them. Uh, they're super fast, very reliable, uh, and they also come with like a little bit of a padding on them. They're, they're also not slippery, they feel nice. I much prefer these over the uh, Samsung ones. So yeah, everything lives on these. I have all the photos and videos that I'm currently working on. Makes life very nice and very quick. So I always have those with me. I then have just started 
recently traveling and wearing an Apple Watch again. So this is an Apple Watch Series 7, uh, and more or less this is just to track my heart rate, my steps, and my oxygen level. I am slowly but surely getting a little bit more into the health side of town and wanting to make sure I'm nailing a lot of things in my life. And one of those things is my heart rate, and especially my heart rate when I sleep. So I just whack this on, and boom, I'm good to go. Of course, it doesn't track everything. Definitely wanna look into getting some kind of tracking ring, but that's something for the future. So at the moment, I definitely will be wearing this on planes and definitely when I'm sleeping. And uh, yeah, very happy with it. So always carrying my Apple Watch with me. I don't particularly like how Apple Watches look when you're out and about. And that's why I also have this guy. So this is my daily watch. I wouldn't wear this to bed. Uh, this watch, I swear to God, was built for me. This is the Tissot Le Lock with uh, the automatic winding, and I am such a huge fan of this watch. I don't know what it is, but when I put it on my wrist, and to be honest, I don't have large wrists, it's it's just the perfect size. I absolutely love it. The white face makes it just go with absolutely everything. Huge, huge fan of this watch. So yes, I have, uh, I've had this watch for just over a year now. Absolutely love it. And uh, yeah, definitely a giant fan of this guy. Anyway, moving on. We have then, actually, we'll move on to this first. We've got this little notebook here. Now this guy partnered up with a lovely little pen is such a nice way to get your thoughts out, to track things that you want to achieve and just overall, journal. I, I've become a huge fan of journaling um, definitely in the last few years. I think the power of getting your thoughts out onto a notebook and also writing things that you want to achieve on paper, like physically, not just on, a, on your phone in the notes app, is something that cannot be replaced. This journal is actually from Emirates. Um, these, these journals can be found in, uh, in the first class suites. I don't fly first class very often. I've only ever flown it once uh, and that was just three points. So absolutely uh, taking advantage of the journals there, but not claiming that I fly first class all the time. So yeah, love this journal. It is, uh, it definitely is feeling pretty empty at the moment. So definitely gonna be filling that up, but I travel with a journal everywhere I go because uh, yeah, always good to reflect and always good to have something that you can physically write on. Next up, we have got just some USB-C cables. So these actually come with the SanDisk drives and I like how small they are. They don't hang off very far. So if you're working on you know, a plane, you don't have this giant USB-C cable dangling out of your laptop onto someone else's tray table. These just go nicely. They go down the side of your tray table and you're done. Big, big fan of these. Next up, we have my passport and the passport holder. This passport holder is from Status Anxiety. It's just a very basic one. And in here, I've got my passport, Kiwi passport. This is the passport I always travel on. And then I've also got a handful of different cards in here. So I've got some licenses, some credit cards, other things like that. And then also always have a little bit of cash on you, especially when you travel. You never know what comes up. Maybe someone's credit card machine isn't working. Maybe your credit cards are declined because you've just traveled overseas and the bank's gone, hold on a minute, you shouldn't be transacting in China or wherever you may be. Yeah, that's uh, that's never ideal. So always make sure you take some kind of cash with you and you should be sweet. So yes, the passport is an absolute must, especially if you're going internationally. Next up is this little guy, little wallet here. This has my health insurance card. Oh, don't wanna give away too much. This has my health insurance card. I then have uh, my main credit card here. I have a driver's license and then my ID card. So yes. That all lives nicely in this little guy here. This is just a basic little, little, I don't even know what to call these. I don't know, little, little thing. I, I'm not a huge carrier of cash, so I only need a little card sleeve, wallet, whatever you call them. Either way, these things, they're cool. Um, all right, next up we have AirPods. Huge fan of these. They also partner up with these, the Sony WHXM 105s or 104s. I'm, Honestly, a little bit confused as to why headphones always have insanely large product names. But either way, the M4s, there you go, 1000X M4s, right on the corner here. So I travel with these, these are for the plane, these are for noise cancellation, but I pretty much don't use them or work with them anywhere else but a plane, everywhere else, is AirPods. These are so convenient to dart through airports, to get in a taxi, be on a phone call, whatever it may be. AirPods, huge, huge pro, always carry them with me. And of course, they're tiny, slip into anywhere. And then of course, got the Sonys as well. So these make the perfect combo for me. And I also, whoop, I also take the cable with me because uh, if they die, huge problem. And uh, yeah, maybe you want to listen to something on the on the TV in front of you on the on the plane. And of course, 
You can only listen to it out of one ear unless you have that weird adapter. Plug these in and you're good to go. Much more comfortable than the plain ones. So anyway, Sony ones, they're great. All right, then we've got three last things. Last one, and we're definitely saving the best for last, sunglasses. These are a local Bali brand uh, from Mason Marta. Love these sunglasses. These are the only sunglasses that I've found that fit and suit my face well. It's a little dark at the moment. Huge fan of these guys. Uh, also makes things just look so much nicer. There's a bit of a warm tint on them, and I really like that. It just makes life look, everyday life, just look a little nicer. And then the last two things I travel with. So I have my iPhone 15 Pro Max. This is the reason why I only carry one lens. I only have the 16 mil lens because I shoot everything else on this phone. I am such a huge fan and I love this phone so much. I've done a review on the cameras, I've done a day in the life with it, and I've gone through all the settings that you need to change to make sure you're taking the best photos and videos. I love it. Sure, it wasn't the biggest upgrade from the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. Huge fan though. This is 100% my daily driver. So this definitely earns its spot and earns its keep in my travel bag. And of course, if you're not traveling with a phone these days, I have no idea how you're actually traveling. Goodness me. And then last but not least, an iPad. To be honest, when I bought my iPad, I thought this was gonna be a productivity machine. It wasn't. Um, it turned into a little bit of a YouTube Netflix machine and it does a really, really good job at it. This is the M1 iPad. I think it's the 256 gig or the 128 gig version. I'm not 100% sure, but either way, it's the M1 iPad. It's overkill for everything it does. And when I'm traveling on a really quick trip like this is I make sure I prepare all my videos before I go so I don't have to do any video editing. And then all that this does is emails, idea generation and writing. A Little bit of Canva, that's it. That's all I do on this iPad. It's also fairly good for Photoshop as well. So that gets a workout, editing photos, amazing. And then if I need to transfer any files, even though I could technically do it on my iPhone now because USB-C port, huge game changer, um, I do it on here. The file structure is simple, it's easy. And of course, I also pair that up. So obviously silver iPad Pro M1, whoop, slide that over. And then we have the magic keyboard case. This case, an absolute non-negotiable. I love it. It's starting to show a little bit of wear now after two years. Um, but apart from that, I think it looks good. Definitely glad I got the black version because the white version, I have a feeling would have looked trashed. But uh, more or less, that's my travel tech essentials. This is what I travel with. This is my everyday carry when I travel on a short trip and I'm not going for a work project because I can tell you right now, if I'm going for on a trip to a production or I'm going on a trip to create videos for a client or whatever it may be, the bag looks a lot different, a lot bigger, and a lot heavier. So anyway, that is what is in my bag. All right, and now we're heading off to China for a very, very short trip. I've got about 24 hours in Shanghai to explore the city and soak up as much of the Chinese culture as I can before flying back out. And I know everyone is gonna have different needs and wants with the gear they travel with, but for me, this ticks every single box. Being able to stay low key, have a small setup and not being weighed down by a large camera is ideal and becoming more and more of a priority. Anyway, I'm gonna head out and explore as much of Shanghai as I can. So I'll catch you later. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.